Yo folks, what's up? Bitwig Studio just released 5.3 Beta 2 and we have new features, also some new improvements. I want to show you this quickly here, what's different. And the biggest change or the first change is that we have now a dedicated frequency shifter plus device for the chain. So it's not only a module in the grid anymore, we have now a dedicated audio FX device. It's all the same sound. It uses the same oversampling here as it says, uh, but there is there are some differences. So here it says the module is unique for, and they mean here the grid module, I guess. So the grid module is unique for key track mode, stereo signal ports for phase in and rate in, and the option to work polyphonically, which means this is only available in the grid. It's not available for the device. And when you look at the device here, this is how it looks like. There's also dedicated help here. You can see all the same parameters, but here it's missing more or less the key tracking mode or the snob from the grid module here. But all the stuff is kind of the same. And also when you select the device, you can see here on the left side in the inspector, there is no, no settings for polyphony or for voice stacking, which is a bit weird or yeah strange because the filter plus device here is also some kind of extended grid module for the chain here right it's yeah it's kind of a, the same as in the grid uh, but here you can choose on the left side the voices you can change voice stacking you have all the options here you already know from the grid containers um, it's all the same thing, but when you select the frequency shifter plus, you can see nothing. Maybe they change this in the future, in the coming releases, in the coming beta versions. Maybe it, you know, stays this way. I have no idea. Um, so yeah, that's that's how it is. Um, then they also added here the stepwise some features to that. You can see on the left side we have now an yeah trigger mode we can send out pulses this was here in before this was the default so we can send out or like let's, let's actually use here different notes we can send on different pulses right and then we can switch this to gate mode and then this becomes just one continuously playing note we have to use the sustain for a moment pulse gate so this allows you basically to play notes or longer notes with this here or shorter notes. You can select your multiple uh, steps and then just combine them. Right, so pretty dope. Then we have also your accent boost. Um, so we can change how much we want to influence the velocity here by using these accent steps. Um, so let's actually use this here for uh, opening the filter and then we have to use pulse right so these accent steps here open up the filter pretty much um, very very much because of the accent boost here so we can change then how much velocity we want to apply so that's basically it but pretty dope to have this in here then we have some global actions. Um, we can remove all the steps at once. We can also randomize all the steps at once. I think this was my first criticism. When I made the stream, I said, this needs some kind of randomize all button. Now we have it. But now the problem is, in my opinion, uh, randomize all fills all these steps way too much. So way too many steps are here selected. Uh, it's almost like the opposite of having everything empty. You have everything empty, then you select tediously all the steps, right? To create some kind of pattern, which is okay. Uh, but then when you use randomize all, you have too much selected and then you need to tediously deselect all the stuff, uh, which is also okay. So it's already pretty dope to have these buttons in my opinion and flip you can just invert the selection or invert all steps also nice so nice to have these things but could be even better if you had some kind of slider and you can change how much you want to fill 
um, these steps, right? Just a few steps, maybe more steps, or make it just completely full, like this randomize all button here. So it could be nice to tweak this algorithm maybe a bit better um, so it makes more sense, more musical sense. I mean, this is also not something you want to send into a drum uh, drum rack, right? That's not a beat. Um, so it could be also nice to use some kind of probabilities um, for this to have more like patterns that make sense for drums or make sense for melodies. Um, could be also nice to tweak this, you know, you know how it is. I make a lot of generative stuff, so you want to tweak the probabilities of how much here some of these um, steps are selected when you hit randomize. Could be nice, but I don't want to, you know, don't want to cry about it. It's already pretty dope to have this here in there, right? Um, let's go back here to the thing. So I showed you here the stepwise with the new gate and pulse modes. Um, then we have your stepwise buttons, clear all lanes, invert all lanes, randomize all lanes. Pretty dope. And um, it randomizes every step per lane, roughly one half res, uh, three eight normal nodes and one eight extended. So they have already some kind of uh, algorithm in place, I guess, or some probabilities in place. Maybe let us tweak us uh, tweak this kind of thing, right? Would be nice. Um, master recording improvements, no longer audio previews, just recorded file. I never had this problem, actually. Don't know what it is. Uh, master meter, no longer sometimes paint atop notifications, no longer show notifications when a previewed file is deleted. Okay, so improved text display and so on. So small little improvements here. Then the frequency shifter plus module, grid module, various GUI help improvements to clarify the various frequency shift unit options and potential uses. So we have hertz, kilohertz of our regular frequency units for shifting. And then node values like bar, eight node, triplet, quarter node of our time synced values for rhythmic effects. So this is pretty dope. I show you this here in the grid. So it's with a pulley grid here. Um, let's use a sign. Let's use an AD to trigger this, put this into um, a frequency shifter plus device. And then we need here an output, something like this. And maybe use a stepwise here and randomly, fi randomly fill this here with, with some patterns. So now we can switch here from Hertz so here this is maximum 0 0.1 hertz, right? And this is minus 0 0.1 hertz, I guess. So we can switch here to um, eight note. And then we have here, um, I guess one eight note or two eight notes. And then we can shift this down exactly in the time of two eight notes, I guess. Right, or two eight notes. Wow, this is too loud. Let's use a peak limiter here. Or 16 note. Or two 16 notes, one 16 note. So yeah, you get pitch shifted rhythmically uh, or rhythmic pitch shift <laughs> or frequency shift effects. So yeah, pretty dope. We have this now here, um, time-based uh, frequency shifter. Never heard of this before. Um, then we have hold now. So if you switch this to hold, um, the internal sign oscillator is switched off and you have to use here this phase input. I guess you have then to use here sign oscillator something like this and you put this in then you choose your one at the ter uh, 100 i think this is right hold disables the center shift controls giving you direct control over the shifting oscillator via the face import and face control in the inspector panel um so uh, this stuff here right so now you can um uh, Yeah, phase shift with some external 
audio rate signals here via this face input and you can see this here this is the GUI change it disables basically the knob so you're not confused that you actually have to change something here uh, then the key track also changes slightly here it looks a bit different right it changes graphically um, but it, you, it, it, it works kind of like before uh, but then you have here this button is gone I, I guess yeah so key track switches this off you can still use here the key track input and then you change here in percentage how much you want to apply it um, let's see key track uses incoming note pitches via pre-chord or all notes reaching the grid device okay so this is basically this here this pre-chord to relatively adjust shifting and the big frequency shift amount knob becomes the only attenuator for the rate in port so the big frequency shift amount knob becomes the only attenuator for the rate in port so um i guess this input here then phase in rate in yeah so here you go in then with the pitch uh thing something like this or something like this right which would be the same as using it the pre-code i guess uh, but you can't define um, how these nodes reach here, the frequency shifter, and then this is here an attenuator, frequency shift amount 100% or minus 100%, so pretty easy to get, I guess. Uh, then there's something new here um, for the bounce workflow. I don't know why they changed this here, but it's nice to have. I really like this here, so we have now... Um, the bounce dialog has now an optional toggle f uh, to execute the bounce in place. So um, maybe select your something and right click and can say bounce, right? This is what I use all the time. It creates more or less a new track uh, with the audio stuff on here as a wave file in a new track. I use this all the time, post fader 32 bit, but now we have here in place, right? So instead of having then like before, a new audio track here with this wave file, we can also say bounce and choose in place. And instead of creating a new audio track with the wave file on it, we create it in place or in yeah on the same on the same track. Um, so yeah, nice to have. Then we have also here um, bounce in place prefx. This is just renamed, so it's yeah like before bounce in place um, this is also prefx so which means everything after the instrument which in this case here is this polygrid so all the effects are not in this um yeah bounce in there so maybe let's use here reverb so when we select this here and say bounce in place prefx you can hear there's no reverb in this wave file, even though we have the reverb on there. And this is useful when you just want to bounce the instrument and you want to keep the audio effects live on this audio track then. So yeah, sometimes you need this. I don't need it most of the times, but sometimes it's, it's handy to have. And then they add, also added here some, um, some shortcuts you can define for bounce in place post fader and also pre fader i guess bounce in place pre fader and bounce in place post fader um so let me see here in the shortcuts i haven't looked for this bounce in place pre fader pre fx this is the normal bounce in place then this one is new prefader. I guess this is um, with the FX in there. So with reverb. Uh, what was the shortcut here? Control, Alt, and B. Okay, let me see. Control, Alt, and B. So now the reverb is in there. Nice. So this is prefader, which means it doesn't matter what kind of um, volume you dial in with the fader here. Control, Alt, and B. So it's the same loudness and the fx is, is in there 
And then the other one is uh, post fader. Control Shift Alt and B. Okay. Control Shift Alt and B. So this one now has also the reverb in there, but it's as you can see here the volume is way down because it's post fader. So after the fader change, right? So this is more or less the change um, we have um, here, which is pre FX. Then the FX comes in, and then here we have pre fader, and then we have the fader, and then we have post fader. So we have three different. Uh, positions you can bounce now the audio with the in place uh, of the with the in place bounce feature which is pretty dope to have i don't know why this is only available here uh, why we have only pre fx here in the drop down and the rest is more or less as an uh, shortcut maybe they add this in the uh, menu here would be nice to have also in there and then see the shortcut for that because I always can't remember some of these shortcuts because I don't use them all the time but I would say beta 2 already delivers some great uh, additional features and improvements and also some fixes here for the audio system some problems with the kick drums um, Frequency Shifter Plus here now uses a longer buffer fade time when delay length changes to reduce abrupt energy buildups with high feedback levels and so on. Uh, I kind of liked it in the in the beta stream. <laughs> you have these screaming uh, feedbacks, but I guess it's better to have this um, yeah in a controlled kind of way. Um, the appreciator device automation of time rate parameter for millisecond seconds now results in a smooth gradual curve nice drum machine device latency compensation is now working correctly for instruments on return channels when receiving audio so very nice fixes here also some crashes fix the rare crash when activating or deactivating Ableton link who, who uses Ableton link right i mean <laughs> Okay, so this is more or less beta 2. It's available for download. I think pretty great changes so far. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a subscription. See you next time and have fun exploring. Right? Bye.